Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Just about 11 o'clock in Honolulu, four o'clock in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands, November 18th, 2016. And this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver, our weekend review. And what a week we have seen ever since a week ago Tuesday when the election, presidential election concluded. We have had some reversals and clear-cut trends with precious metals trading dramatically lower over this week and equities trading substantially higher. Dollar also going to a 13-year high. First to gold. Gold is closing off on the week as well as on the day. As far as today's move, we are looking at COMEX Gold, 1208 and change, putting it off about $8 on the day. Now it's traded to a low of 1203.12 and a high of 1217.80. As I said, closing off about $8 on the day. And that of course is when we look at spot gold. When we go over to COMEX, it is trading 1208.40 also. Very, very similar lows and highs, 1201.30 to 1217.50. COMEX Silver also under pressure on the day, down about a percent to 1.2% uh, lower at 16.57, off about 20 cents on the day. The low has been 16.43 and the high 16.74. Now, equities markets continue to rage, although today we did see them really give back just a little bit. We have seen a little bit of congestion, especially in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which has climbed to a new record high at the beginning of this week and now has found some real resistance. Dow Jones at 18,868, the high 18,915 with a low of 18,853. A Standard & Poor's also trading slightly lower on the day, off about a tenth of a percent at 21.84, putting it off about three points. NASDAQ giving a little bit back also today, uh, really trading about 20 points lower or half a percent at 48.07. Dollar index extremely strong, continues to rage. We are now at 10131 on the dollar index. And finally, oil. Oil has gained some ground today, up about a half a percent, but it is higher on the week. Let's take a look at our first chart. So traders, on today's show, I wanted to cover really much more of our long-term view and our current forecast models that are looking not only towards the end of this year but the beginning of next it's quite obvious that with this new news of trump becoming the 45th president of the united states we're really looking at a moving target in other words things can change at any moment and right now i think that the underlying characteristics of what we're witnessing in the market is short-term optimism in other words once the election results began to get compiled and come in. We saw gold rise massively up about $50 at one point. We saw U.S. equities under tremendous pressure. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures down about 800 points only to do a 180 turnaround completely with gold closing tremendously lower and really uh, selling off from the election point up until now. And the opposite for equities, equities moving to higher ground. So with that in mind, what are we looking for with gold? Well, the first thing that I want to look at is some of the seasonal tendencies or yearly tendencies that we can extrapolate from, from these charts. Now, we're looking at a weekly chart. And as you can see, uh, these lines, of course, represent the beginning of a year. This represents 2014, 2015, 2016, and so on. Now, one of the things that you'll notice since 2014 is that had you bought at the beginning of the year, here, here, or here, you would have made a significant profit in that the beginning of the year or shortly after seems to be where the market came down to. In other words, what we've seen over the last couple of years is lower pricing going into the conclusion of a current year, bottoming at some point either uh, December of that year, uh, January or February of the uh, new year, and then moving higher. You 
got the same thing, although it really began to bottom in October when we look at 2015. And then, of course, this year we bottomed, what, in about December of, 2015, of 2016. So there's absolutely no doubt in terms of a seasonal tendency, we seem to have gold prices kind of drifting lower towards the end of the year, a beginning of the new year, and then moving higher from there. With that in mind, I want to show you our current model. The current model that we are looking at is really the dramatic rise in gold as it came in from about 2008 till about mid-2011 to a record or historical top above $1,900 per ounce. And I believe that that completed what is simply called a major fifth. This model that we're looking at is, of course, Elliott Wave based. From there, we went into a long and protracted corrective period, which I've broken down as such. Uh, wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four. As you can see on four and five, I start to do the sub count. So what we are looking at is, for example, on wave four, you've got one, two, three, four, and then five. That completes this fourth. And we go into a wave five, one, two, three, four, and five. And here's the thing. That I believe not only completed our, our small five, but our intermediate as well as our major A. In other words, if we had a major fifth here, this long protracted move down completed a major A, which means that we are in a major B right now. I believe this major B is going to be composed of a, a three count, basically an ABC. It is a corrective wave. Since the action was to the downside, the corrective wave is going to be up. And so my sense is that we have seen wave one, we are currently, excuse me, wave A, we are currently in B, and that will be followed by a up wave, which will be C. Now, here's what I find interesting. You notice that I've got a couple of different fib retracements, and they're quite simple. One fib retracement starts from the record top and takes us down to these lows at around 1040, and then the point of interest, of course, is our 38% retracement because that pretty much gave us the top to the most recent rally that we experienced through April, uh, June, and July into the market, of course. We have seen this market trade lower since that, and I think we are now in a B wave. I've got a secondary Fib retracement, which goes from the low achieved this year down here, again, 1050, up to these highs at 1380, and of Noteworthy um, value is the 61% retracement that comes in at 11.69, and then a 50% retracement which comes in at approximately 12.09. Now we are right at this particular point, meaning 12.09, and my sense is that we could find support here and bounce off of that to start our C wave. However, it's probably more likely that we'll see some further decline in gold as we go in through the end of the year. And that's the reason I started by looking at seasonal tendencies and bottoming out somewhere between January and February, once Trump is elected, I believe that we could see gold go as low as about, call it 1170. And from there, I believe we will see this market then go into a counter wave, taking out this former high at about 1380 and moving as high as about 1477. 1477 would be a 50% retracement of this large move uh, from 19 to 1050. And typically a B wave is anywhere between uh, 50 and 75%. Now, in terms of the time parameters that it will take, that is something that FIB retracement as well as Elliott Wave does not account for. But as I said, I believe what we're witnessing in terms of the fundamentals of the market is a short-term optimism. And should Trump be able to pull off what he says he can, we could see gold continue to go lower. That's that optimism. We've got a very, very strong U.S. dollar. Equities markets are ramped up and running to new highs and precious metal safe haven investments are under pressure. So that is my current forecast for gold towards the end of the year. 
So traders, as far as silver goes, I believe that just like gold, we could continue to see a trade under pressure. Although in terms of percentage drawdowns, we have seen silver really under much more pressure than gold. In the same breath, we have seen it move substantially higher in terms of percentage gains over recent activity. Now, I've got a couple of trend lines in this chart. The major trend line that we want to look at is simply compiled by extending these series of lows and then extending that up. We also have a 28-week moving average, and that's this dotted blue line here, as well as one Fib retracement, which again is the yearly low at around just below 14 to the yearly high, just above 21. And it, when we look at our 61% retracement level, that comes in at around 1652. We have had lows that came in below that point this week, but the market seems as though it closed at 1658. It was down about a percent, one percent plus today down 18 cents and the real question is whether or not this particular price point will hold and silver will find support in this area or if we will go to the next level should silver continue under pressure we really on a technical basis don't have any real support until about a 16 dollars per ounce Dow Jones Industrial Average, although closing lower on the day today at about 18,877, that's the current print about an hour into the close. We can see a couple of things that are quite apparent. First of all, the dramatic rise that we saw in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, along with the Standard & Poor's and the NASDAQ, once the announcement was clear that Donald Trump was to be our next president. Again, that short-term optimism taking us well above our former record historical highs at 18,600 to where we are now flirting with 18,900, that being the high today, 18,915. However, at the same time, over the last four trading days, this being a daily chart, we have noticed some real headwinds or resistance coming in roughly at 18,900. Now, whether or not this is a consolidation period before moving to higher ground, or as in the past, after we hit these record highs, retracing a little bit, settling down before making its next move, that will be determined next week. My sense is that as long as this short-term optimism is prevalent within the market, we could see yet another record high over the next couple of weeks. So traders, as far as crude oil goes, yes, we did see a pretty dramatic rise this week, uh, trading from a low at about $42 a barrel to a high of about $46 a barrel, only to close at around $45.61. That puts it up about a half a percent on the day. This weekly candle shows the rise during the week. However, within that context, I still believe that we have crude oil trading within a uh, defined range. That defined range has extreme headwinds and resistance at about $52 a barrel. It also has very, very solid support at around $42 a barrel. I think that we could see a trade within this defined range. As you can see here, it did not trade to the top of the channel, goes to the bottom. We see a trade once again to the top, here to the bottom. So I wouldn't be surprised to either see the market trade up to this midpoint. It could again flirt and move back up to this channel, but I think we're going to be range bound in the market, range bound to lower pricing. What we want to see is if there's a point that it breaks above or below these channel lines. My sense is if we do get a break uh, out of these channel lines, it would be to the downside. But as for right now, I am looking for oil to continue to trade within this tract over the next couple of weeks. The US dollar has been on an absolute tear, gaining about 3% this week alone as it broke well above 100, closing up today up about a third of a percent at 101.22. We haven't seen that price since 2003. And last week also, we had a similar kind of rise up about two or three percent. You can see it when we look at these candlesticks here. These are weekly candlesticks. We really noticed the market accelerate and take off really at the beginning of October. It was trading roughly at 95.50.
And from October through this month, we have seen it go up about 6%, 6% in what, about a month and a half. So we've got an extremely strong U.S. dollar in terms of where it could find resistance. We don't have any logical point on a technical basis till about 102. And of course, this market is fueled fundamentally, and we have to see how these events unfold as we get closer and closer uh, to our next president actually taking office. The Chinese have a saying, may you live in most interesting times, which reminds me of another saying, and that is be careful what you wish for. There's absolutely no doubt. Last week's election was a game changer. It changed the basic financial climate and sentiment, not only in the United States, but globally. We saw precious metals, which initially rallied, sell off and sell off hard since the election. We have seen equities markets move to new record highs, specifically the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Both the Standard & Poor's as well as the NASDAQ are now trading solidly, solidly above their 50-day moving averages. And our sense is right now that what we are witnessing is a short-term optimism as the election itself unfolds in terms of who Trump will put in as cabinet members and people around him, the best is yet to come in terms of what I believe we will see within these markets, but I think we are in for most interesting times. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.